who have started something called the Love Driven Politics Collective. And the idea is to say, isn't it about a time that we bring the idea of love to bear on politics, both our political ends and our political means? Uh, and that to me is tremendously exciting. And that's exactly what I'm advocating for in the first third of this new book. Yeah, one of my favorite passages in the book is where you talk about the nature of love. Uh, you state, you can't learn to love people without being around actual people, <laughs> including people who infuriate, exasperate, annoy, offend, frustrate, encroach upon, resist, reject, and hurt you, thus tempting you to not love them. And I felt, Brian, that you were talking directly to me <laughs> at yeah. this point, um, especially in this point, as you've been talking about in American politics, but I'm living in this kind of tension because you also talk rightfully a lot about the need to expose injustice. Yeah. And so when we have these kinds of conversations, can you help guide me through this tension of loving all people, especially as Jesus commands those we call our enemies, and exposing the injustice that we think our enemies are causing? Yeah. Well, this is really, really important. And I think it, it, as we take that question seriously, Adam, it's going to result in a whole new kind of activism. Uh, because a lot of our activism in recent years involved uh, demonizing our opponents, uh, ascribing the worst possible motivations to their actions. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've been on the receiving end of this. I, I remember a few years ago, uh, a, a book was written by a, a conservative Christian critic of mine, a, a very you know loyal critic. Um, he wrote a book that was largely about me with a, a rattlesnake on the cover. That usually is not a good sign. Uh, and uh, I was I was given uh, I was allowed to see an early draft of the book before it was published, and the author said something like, "You know, he now he disagrees with." my interpretations of the Bible, and he even disagrees with the way I interpret the Bible. And the truth is, I disagree with him on both counts as well. But what he said is, McLaren, it's obvious McLaren hates the Bible. Well, look, that's just not true. I, I love, I respect the Bible. I've devoted my life in many ways to understanding it and communicating its, its message. And uh, so it's just not true to say I hate the Bible, but it's very tempting. You know, it's very tempting when we disagree with someone to try to put all their motives, to put the worst spin we possibly can on their motives. What would happen if we did the opposite? What would happen if uh, we tried to ascribe the best motives to the people we disagree with? We give them every benefit of the doubt we can. And in that spirit, we disagree. Uh, you know, it, I think it, it might take a little longer, but it will produce it will produce fewer unintended negative consequences uh, along the way. You know, this is part of what's so disturbing in this political campaign when in your attempt to win, you actually poison the whole system. You make it harder for anybody to govern after the election is over. And we do something similar in our activist work. We have to find a way to even protest and disagree in a spirit of love. <laughs> 